Chapter 2 Water a Natural Resource From the time we get up in the morning, we use water for many purposes such as drinking, cleaning, cooking and washing. How much water does one person need in one day? About 50 liters. However, this much water is not easily available and so scarcity of water has become a matter of concern all over the world. So how much water is available on our earth? About 71% of the earth's surface is covered with water. However, most of this water is in seas and oceans. As sea water is salty, it cannot be used either for drinking or agriculture. We get drinking water from streams, rivers, ponds and lakes. The flowing water in rivulets, streams, rivers seeps into the ground. Due to this, underground reserves of water are formed. This water is called groundwater. We obtain water from these sources by digging wells and tube wells. However, with continuous use, the level of groundwater is falling. Wells, tube wells, ponds, lakes and rivers are all sources of water. They are replenished by rainwater. Water is found on the earth in three stages. Water in wells, lakes, rivers and seas as well as groundwater is in the liquid form. In the polar regions and at the tops of the high mountains, water is in the form of ice that is in the solid form. Water in air is in the form of vapor or in gaseous form. Depending upon temperature, water changes its state. At 0 degrees Celsius, ice changes into water that is it changes from solid to liquid state. At 100 degrees Celsius, it changes into vapor that is from a liquid to a gaseous state. So, ice to water to vapor. Now, take two dishes of the same size. Put two spoons of water in each dish. Place one dish in the sun and one in the shade or inside your classroom. Observe the two dishes. So, the conclusion is, Water evaporates at all temperatures from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. At higher temperatures, water evaporates faster. In hot, dry regions, the soil too is dry. These areas get very little rain. When it does rain, the hot and dry weather causes water to evaporate quickly. To solve the water problem from these areas, Water from other places is taken there through canals and this is known as irrigation. To reduce the evaporation of water, there are some ways. A layer of a substance called cetyl alcohol is sprayed on the water in reservoirs in which large quantities of water are stored. This helps to reduce the evaporation of water. Two, water from irrigation is usually carried through open canals Instead, if the water is carried through large pipes, it costs a little more but it prevents much of the evaporation of water. 3. To save water, some plants are grown under plastic covers. Water in the soil evaporates in the sun but condenses due to the plastic cover and drops of water fall back onto the ground. Water is necessary for plants to grow. Plants use some of the water to prepare food. Some of the water is stored in the plant and the remaining water is released in the form of vapor. This is called transpiration. In this way, plants help to increase the quantity of water vapor in the air. Now we'll see what is meant by water pollution. If wastewater or chemicals are released into the water flowing over the land, the water does not remain fit for drinking. Very often, Waste water from industries is allowed to flow into nearby sources of water without any treatment. Thus, water gets contaminated and this is called water pollution. The law makes it compulsory to treat waste water properly before it is released from the factory. Where this is not possible, trench latrines, septic tanks, and soap pits are built to drain away the waste from toilets and latrines. Now, portable water. The water that we get from the different sources 
may not all be fit for drinking. At water treatment plants, there are filtering machines to remove the impurities and destroy the germs in the water. Chlorine is also added to the water at the plant and this process is called chlorination. The government spends a lot of money on the storage, filtration, chlorination of water and on supplying the water to our houses through pipes. That is why piped water is costly and we must take care to see that such water is not wasted. So, water management is very important. About three-fourths of the earth is occupied by water but 97% of this water is in the seas. It means that only 3% of the water can be used for drinking or other purposes. We may find a way out of this water crisis by using measures like taking care on a personal level to use water sparingly, reusing water after suitable treatment rather than wasting it, reopening old wells that have become blocked and this is called water management. Now, Something about rainwater harvesting. When rainwater is collected and used later, it is called rainwater harvesting. As rainwater is clean, it can be stored and used later without any treatment. Besides this, water in the drains along the sides of the roads is also allowed to seep into the ground. This helps to raise the level of groundwater and thus water deserves are replenished.